Hey everybody, Neil Malik with Knack Training, bringing you another everyday office video. And in today's video, I'd like to illustrate what Power Pivot does for us inside of Microsoft Excel. So as you can see on my screen, at the top of the screen up here, I have a Power Pivot tab. This is available as an add-in for Excel for the last few versions at least. And if you don't have one at the top of your screen, you're gonna to go to the File tab in the top left-hand corner. You're going to go down to Options, and on your Options, you're going to go under Add-ins over here on the left. And specifically, this is what's called a COM add-in. From the drop-down menu down here at the bottom, I choose COM add-ins and click Go, and you'll notice here that my Power Pivot checkbox is checked. So make sure that your Power Pivot checkbox is checked so that you can try to do things that are similar to this. Now, what's the point of using Power Pivot? Well, on the Power Pivot tab, you'll notice that it does two very important things that it models the data using relationships, allowing us to establish what the relationships between different pieces of information are, and it allows us to create calculations. In this video, we're going to make use of relationships. Now, if you look at my spreadsheet, you'll see on the left that we have a few columns of information devoted to sales. And that for every sale, we have a customer, we have a product, and we have how much that customer spent. Now over on the right, we have further information about the customer and further information about the product. Why didn't we take the information about what type of product it was, or what type of customer it was, or what region it was, and put it into the original sales table? Well, it's because of consistency and ease of updating. If I said that this customer was serviced by the salesperson in every single row of my data, and then the salesperson turned out to be incorrect for some reason, I'd have to find every single instance of that same customer and update their salesperson. And the same way, what if the salesperson goes under a different manager? Well, it's much easier to say, here is a listing for the salesperson and here's who their manager is, than it is to track down every single time we said what somebody's manager was. So what we're doing here is we're taking all the dependencies out of our main set of data. And we're saying, we'll be able to look up who the salesperson is. We'll be able to look up the region. We'll be able to look up the product type whenever it's relevant to do that. So at this stage in the process, this is typically where people would go looking for the VLOOKUP function. VLOOKUP would allow us to look up the information, right? Here's our product. Tell me what type of product it is. Here's our customer. Tell me who the sales manager is who's responsible for that customer. And that would normally result in tons of calculations. But now, what we can do is we can go to the Power Pivot tab at the top of the screen, and we can take these different sets of data and add them to the overall data model. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Tables here and add it to the data model. Notice that I have tables here. This table is a table called TBL Sales. This table is called TBL Customers. This uh, table is called TBL Products. And this table is called TBL Salespeople. So you'll want to make sure that you've got that in place before you click on one of the tables and you tell it to add it to the data model. So the data model launches in Excel here. And you can see Power Pivot now, right? You can see the Power Pivot knows about sale IDs, customer IDs, product IDs, and sales. What I'm going to do is go up here to my diagram view. And I'm going to look to see if any of the other tables are here. Notice they're not here yet. Now, one of the really interesting things about Power Pivot is that these don't have to come from Excel at all. Notice that I can get data from SQL Server. I can get data from lots of outside sources here. What I'm going to do now is add the other tables as well. I'll just click this button at the top to switch it back to the workbook, click on to one of my tables, and add that to the data model, and bring in the other two tables as well. Click on a table, add it to the data model, and 
click on a table, and add it to the data model. So now I have my four tables on the data model. How do I say that the sales table is related to the customer table? Watch how easy this is. I grab my customer ID and I drag it to my customer ID. And now there's a relationship between those two tables. Then from product ID to product ID, and there's a relationship between these two tables. But the relationship with salespeople is actually from customers. Every customer has a salesperson, so I'll drag that over and establish the relationship. And now PowerPivot automatically knows that customers are the same from one table to the next, products are the same from one table to the next, and salespeople are the same from one table to the next. And you can make an incredibly complex set of data this way. Compare this to how many VLOOKUPs you would have had to make, and this is obnoxiously easy. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pivot table directly from this data model. Up at the top of the screen you'll see pivot table, and I can choose to add a pivot table or even just go directly to a pivot chart. I'm going to go ahead and I'll make sure that I'm on the sales table to begin with and I'll add a new pivot table. It drops this into a new worksheet for me. I'll click OK. And you can see that it automatically detects that there's customers, products, sales, and salespeople. Now in this pivot table, I think what I'd like to do is total up the total sales and after I click the total sales checkbox within TBL sales, I'll click this little drop down menu here, go to value field settings, and I'll call this uh, total sales. Go to my number formatting, make it maybe an accounting format, and hit OK, and hit OK. And now with my $75 million in sales, let's take the next logical step and break it down by something that's useful to me. So maybe I'll break this down by type of product. So I'll go to my TBL products and click the checkbox here for product type. So now I can see that I've sold $48 million worth of microprocessors and less of the other two types of products. I might even uh, right click in here and sort largest to smallest. And I might also come in here and add a pivot chart, maybe a bar chart like this one. And I'll just clean up this bar chart a little bit. I'll get rid of some of the extraneous labeling that's in here. You see these gray boxes over here on the left? Click on Pivot Chart Analyze at the top of the screen and turn off your field buttons. Now for reasons that defy explanation, it goes materials, optics, and microprocessors when it goes microprocessors, optics, and materials over here on the left. So I'm just going to click on these labels, hit the keyboard shortcut control one, and tell it to put the categories into reverse order so that matches more with what we're expecting. Take those labels off, and I'll also click on the background of this chart, fill it with nothing, and put no border around the outside, and now I'll be able to line up this chart with its connected pivot table. I'll also come over here to the side and with my bar selected, I'll tell it to put a gap width of something like 25% and just squeeze down that chart so it looks like it really belongs next to a pivot table like this one. Not bad. Now the next thing to do here is also to filter this by the other tables, right? So we have a breakdown of the different types of products, but what about our different types of customers? With this pivot table selected, we can go up here to the pivot table analyze tab at the top of the screen and add a slicer and notice that we can slice this based on the two tables we've already used or all the tables that are in that data model. So I'll go over here to my region, click the checkbox for region, and my customer type, click the checkbox for customer type, and hit OK. And now I can say I want to know how much we are doing in terms of the different types of products for the different types of customers in the different regions that we're talking about. 
So by using Power Pivot, we have the capacity to create a very sophisticated way of filtering and segmenting the information in pivot tables and other tools by establishing relationships between data that does not have to be brought together through the power of the viewer.